Listen. Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat, IGN's Nintendo show, also known as NVC. I'm your host, Casey DeFridis. I'm here with three very good friends. Tom Marks. Hello. Zach Ryan. Hi. Just to clarify, we're all good friends with you, but the three of us don't actually care for each other. They actually other. completely hate That's each other. That's right. I think of us Shut up, Sam. long-term co-workers. <laughs> And Sam L- long t- long-term glow workers. Um, this is we're back in this room where we, we used to. I used to host the show, and it was in this room. And I hate being back here. Why? And it feels terrible. <laughs> and fun fact: I've been in here the whole time. <laughs> Nobody let him out. <laughs> Never left. Now, do you hate? Do you hate it because it's just like a sweaty hot box in here? Is that? I didn't even think about that part. Now I hate it even more. Mm. It even gets like that sometimes when you're in here. It, this is also the solo streams room. So when you're in here by yourself. Mm-hmm. And it still gets kind of warm. Yeah. There's actually someone yeah. streaming in the background right now. Yeah. Now, Casey, I noticed you don't have a custom intro yet, so you're working your way towards that. I'm working my way towards uh, that. Jose had welcome, and yeah, I just uh, that's sort that. of yeah, that's sort of thief. stuck for the last few generations <laughs> oh, really? of okay. hosts. Yeah. Before that, everybody only said "What's up, everybody." That was all it was. Well, that's just until generic uh, YouTuber. Yeah, well, uh, I think we started it though. Oh. I don't I, think anybody ever contracted uh, what and is before I, IGN. I think Greg and, Miller actually invented "What's up, everybody." <laughs> He might think that. Yeah. Um, I think it was Damon. I think that's a what's up, everybody. That, no, that, that could Damon be. Thing. That could be. So how, like, how about the this? Cameras we'll just, turn I'll just off emulate the show goes someone off the different rails. every day for, well, until I run out. What, what do you I think did about? Is I had writer people write in, and I say, "What? How should we start the show?" And mm-hmm. one day, a reader uh, or listener wrote in, "Well, you should start it with Hey, listen,' because that's what Navi yeah. says." So we would say, "Hey, listen, everybody," and that's how we'd start the show. And I thought that was really cute. So you can have that, but you should ask people maybe how to yeah. start it. Or uh, we're gonna do a poll. Yeah, Paul. I was thinking, uh, let's kick some tires and light some fires. It's time for MVC. Mm-hmm. No. Let's shake oh. the trees and rake Vito. the leaves, little buddy. Vito. You're here in Astrodome City, and we're going to talk about video games. Yeah. Put those. We in got Smokey on our six. <laughs> so, I have a CB dictionary I can bring in. Uh, that should solve let's a lot do it. of things. <laughs> Citizens. And for oh, those yes. of you who can't see Citizen us, band. I just want to describe That's what everyone, everyone looks like That's today. literally everyone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Literally everyone. So Tom uh, is not wearing his bow ties. That was just for show. It's not true. Sam's mustache is gone. That was actually just a sticker well, this entire it's a, time. It was, since we started going to audio only, I just figured I'll just let it grow. <laughs> A full, so full you might not look like a mustache beard. anymore, but it's it's more the mustache grew over the rest of my body, and <laughs> now it's just it's sense. like cousin it, but only from your upper yeah. lip. Yeah, yeah. it's Sas- Sasquatchian. <laughs> yeah, and and Zach's got a full on beer now, and so do I. Uh, a, I full a, a full beer, a full beer. Yeah, we're getting hammered drunk. Well, first all right. of all, we could be having full beers right now, but we're not like idiots. Well, that's true. I never, What's I hadn't considered that until just now. I mean, at least my drink is half percent alcohol. Please look, forward, please look forward to episode 449, where around the 40-minute mark, stuff starts to get real loose. So. <laughs> well, now that it's audio, I know you guys out there in listening land might have heard that we're doing this for a lot of different reasons, but one of them is so we could save lots of money and get a keg of wine. That's true. We yeah. actually did get a keg of wine yeah. recently, which I'm very excited it's about. It's bad wine. It and is tastes like a It foot. is free. Uh, it is yeah. good. And it is good free wine. Now let's use this in past tense because it went in like four days. Is it? Uh, is it gone now? Oh, it was gone the f- Thursday after the Monday we got it, which was already two weeks ago. That says a lot about the working environment here at IGN. <laughs> I feel. But like. But maybe if we turn it upside down, we can get a nice glass of wine and some Krypton gas. Perfect. Delicious. <laughs> but hey, on that note, I'm sure you guys drank some wine and some beer in celebration for National Mario Day. What a segue. <laughs> that was a really good segue. Yeah. Which is March 10th. Yeah. And Mar- why why is it called Mario Day on yeah. March 10th? Mar 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 10. Yeah, Mar 10 Mar- looks Mario. like Mario. <laughs> yeah. It's cute. I was looking for like an origin story where like there was a game released that day. No, no. I didn't find anything. Nah. All the games are in the fall. It's just the fact that the date looks like Mario, and also it's funny because this is like probably the I don't know third year that I've been aware of Mario Day, but the first time that I saw it on Twitter, I was like, "Why is everybody talking about Mar One O? What's going on on Mar Ten? What's happening here?" <laughs> it yeah. should be Martin Day. Yeah, he's, he's a good uh, classmate of Bart's. <laughs> if you look, what's at Martin's last name? Prince. Martin Prince. Martin Prince. Yeah. If you actually look at the the holiday in the United States, like list of holidays, and they talk about Mario Day, and then they at the end they list here are some other famous Mario's that you might know about. Really? Like, <laughs> this this is not for them. This Mario is for Andretti, the Nintendo character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, no. Mario Lopez. Yeah. Who's who else? Mario who's Vitale. Else? Mario Vitale. Yeah. Anybody else got good Mario? Yeah. If that your is, name is Mario, this, this day is for you. That is literally two more Marios than I since, could have named. Since it's Luigi's last name, Luigi Mario. Uh, I guess. I, I, I don't know. Is that canon? Sure. 
It is in this office. <laughs> They're called the Mario Brothers. I don't know what could be more canon. It's yeah. in the title of the only game right. series that they're in. All right. Yeah, that's All right. right. All right. Fair. So I wanted to ask you is what, what is your favorite Mario game? Oh. Uh, Legend of Zelda Seven Stars. <laughs> what am I saying? Super Mario <laughs> RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. You, that, I just had a moment. Well, were I'm you sorry. making a joke? or No, okay? I just like literally <laughs> my brain turned off. <laughs> Tom had some sort of weird Super Mario aphasia. RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. That's your favorite Mario game? Uh, probably. I love that. Well, you're game. walking it back now? No, 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 no. I'm, That's I'm, a terrible answer, and you should walk it back. I think, Sam. like, Thousand Year Door is up there for me, but man, I love the RPGs. I really mm-hmm. do. And and I, I'm just, I just say pick that up as my face palm. <laughs> <laughs> I say that as, as people should know, I'm a huge platformer fan, but man, something about Legend of the Seven Stars just, like, has stuck with me to this mm-hmm. day. I memorized, I never bought that game. I always rented it from my local video store and I memorized which serial code it was because they had two copies and the save files was on the game bo- or on the game cartridge so I had to remember which serial number was on the barcode of the rented copy so I could keep renting it and keep my save. I feel like I've heard you tell that story before about a different game. No, no, no. It was about that one if I told it before too. I think you guys can't see when we talk about lost save files. files. Yeah. Oh, I think we talked about it is. One That's lost the one. Files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go back to a oh, previous right. NBC. And- yeah, okay. I take it back. I yeah. was, for those of you that can't see me, that's everybody, I was giving him a very suspicious look. <laughs> but you're right. That's what it was for. Um, my favorite Mario game is Super Mario World. I think I've said that many, many times on this show. You know, mine I, too. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, Super Mario World is probably the only video game that I would ever say is a perfect game. As a perfectly made game. Every level is perfect. Every sprite animation is perfect. That's a perfect game. 10 out of 10, 100% perfect and it's a perfect follow-up to another great mario game super mario brothers 3 yeah i knew that was your favorite yeah <laughs> i just it's, think it did all the same stuff that it, that did and uh i just like i like the worlds a little bit better and i like the map secrets a little bit better it's a little harder and um i don't know the levels I, are really think, short but they're vertical mm. and i think that was like a cool mario thing at the time plus that raccoon tail that's good it, you know what it might be harder and that might be a good thing yeah I, I, I did find Mario 3 more difficult than Super Mario. So Super Mario World was my first Mario game. Okay, that And makes I sense. went back and played the older ones, and I found those more difficult uh-huh. than Super Mario World. Yeah, the but GBA not, one? Yeah. Did you play that one? I, I played... Because <laughs> that had the e-reader you could add levels to. No, I played a, I can't, played a Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. Yeah, 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 Super Mario Land and Super Mario Land 2 are on the Game Boy. Yeah. Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins. That's, that's such, a, such a good one. Really good music. <laughs> yeah. one. And you can mm-hmm. become Bunny Mario, which is really cute. And it has that level that like you go inside a giant Mario, and yeah, it's like it, all Legos like and stuff. Animatronic Mario. Dude, I love that. It's so good. But, Tom, I'm with you. Like the Mario RPGs are really fun, and I really like them, but I'm, I'm specifically talking about like Paper Mario. Okay. Like um, Super Paper Mario on the Wii and that Paper Mario. That game's really cool. Yeah, yeah, I liked it a lot. Super Paper Mario was the one that shook it up where it wasn't a straight RPG anymore, right? Yeah, yeah it's it, action. Mm-hmm. It was... Is, it and was you could flip the levels combat. and yeah, go yeah. 3D. That game and, was great. And it's weird, a weird Easter egg in that game, which never you would never expect, is that the Mike Tyson's Punch Out code is in it. <laughs> what? Why? Yeah, I, I don't like know. Like the why. game code? Yeah, uh, you you have to enter a code to fight Mike Tyson in Mike Tyson's Punch Out, the NES. Game. Oh, and that that code is in it. Yeah, and that code's like on a wall. I thought you meant like they it's put the really entirety obscure. of the weird source code of Mike Tyson's Punch no. Out. No. Oh yeah, no, like, I thought that too. <laughs> yeah, that'd be more like Animal Crossing. Yeah. Where the first Animal Crossing, you just get a bunch of free NES games. Yeah. And so this year, we're actually getting um, a really huge art book called The Art of Super Mario Odyssey. I think it's like something around like 300-something pages. It's coming out October 22nd. It's going to be $49.99. And it includes concept art, preliminary sketches, and notes from the development team, and insight into early ideas that didn't make it into the game itself. Mm. I'm super excited about that. The concept art is my favorite part about these books. Yeah. Yeah, Like... I love Super Mario Odyssey. I love the way it looks. I'd like to see some like I'd I'd like to see like a, a art of Mario book in general mm-hmm. because like I know you're on the same wavelength, but like that early Mario art where he's like so round and so pudgy and like all the enemies are like <laughs> yeah. so funny looking. Like Everything's I love that like early '90s Mario aesthetic, like especially the stuff that was in the manuals or like on the side of the uh, the arcade cabinet. And stuff. Mm-hmm. Ugh, so cool. But I think this book looks really nice too. From a preservation standpoint, I'm so happy that there's like you know Nintendo's opening an archive, publishing sketches and like concept stuff mm-hmm. that could potentially be lost for their older games. We don't know because there was the um, Mario All-Star Collection for Wii and it came with a bunch of like really cool Mario stuff in it and that was the first time we'd seen it and it's like, oh, well, maybe they do have some archives but we don't know what their archive system is like and it really worries me that, you know, there's stuff lost to time about planning and and making these games and it's good that they're preserving it in this way. You hear about it all the time, right, where 
um, people talk about games just being lost forever because like developers didn't save the source code or, or it right. got trashed or, you know, the office got flooded or whatever it might be. The most recent one I've heard is like that rumor is really hot around final fantasy eight where, you know, that's not coming to any of the, it's not coming to switch or any of the other platforms because that, that source code just doesn't exist anymore. Oh no. But uh, who knows if that's true? It's probably Gosh. not. That yeah. seems like a multi-million dollar game well, that they probably I mean, saved somewhere else. So. Yeah. It's an yeah. interesting idea. And, and, you know, remakes can happen in lieu of that. So, but you know, I, I think it's weird that, like uh, modders or emul- I don't know what you call people that make emulated games, but like that, that help emulators work and stuff, but they can put those things out really well. And mm. sometimes it's messed up that, you know, companies that own the rights to those games are worse at emulation than people making illegal ROMs. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited to see concept art of Odyssey specifically too, because that was one of the most impressive things about that game to me is the, the design of the worlds and how they realize these worlds. And I am so excited to see all the ideas they threw away mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Well, like re- the, this this came up on Twitter recently just because I think of mm-hmm. Mario Day where it was like people talking about, you know, oh, there's all this content was cut from Odyssey. But it's like, no, co- like there's that much content cut from literally every game you've ever played. Yeah. And it's so cool for when developers kind of t- lower the curtain and say, you know what, hey, this is some of the stuff that we didn't finish this or didn't work or didn't fit in or whatever reason uh and i love being able to see that and i'm excited to see that for a game that is so like its worlds are so good i'm excited to see like just what did what we almost got or what didn't make the cut yeah i think we see a lot of that kind of stuff in the legend of zelda series we've seen a lot of concept art remember that gdc talk from a few years ago after breath of the wild came out and they showed concept art of like a more modern looking link he right. had like cargo pants or something wild, and then like also they they showed off sketches of him riding a motorcycle, and everybody's like, "That's ridiculous!" And then that's what the DLC was, like, <laughs> and it was awesome. Yeah, it's like uh, concept art like that is really interesting because it's like looking into an alternate dimension or like an alternate timeline, especially considering the Legend of Zelda, right? Like you're looking at like a switch split, timeline, like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's also funny because like you look at something like the concept art for the Wind Waker and like Toon Link was not this squat little guy. He was like this awkward, like gangly teenager and that like could have been a whole different mm-hmm. game. You know, mm-hmm. I think that that's what's really interesting to me about some of these like design sketches and concept art stuff is just seeing what could have been. So this book has actually been out in Japan for a little while and someone posted pictures of what looks like could have been a Bowsette concept art. Oh, like a, a female <laughs> Bowser. OK, which looks very similar to the Bowsette that we've come to Are love you sure it know. wasn't Wendy Koopa? Oh, you know what? Maybe someone just took Wendy Koopa and just took that. I don't No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, I, I saw th- the picture sorry. and like Wendy O Koopa. Oh no, it 100% correction. was not Wendy Koopa. It was a it was a Bowser with a with a princess look. <laughs> yeah. But um that's I'm, out there which is interesting yeah. and Nintendo still won't comment on it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The comment is the art book, right? This yeah. is this is their their yeah, final yeah, yeah. statement is they're like yeah. stop asking us questions. Here's all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys want to see in the next Mario game? Well, that's a really good segue because I was going to put a pin in what you were just talking about. Uh, the, all those things uh, indicate that there's probably more Mario levels just in Odyssey that they thought were a good or a mediocre idea, but not a great idea. And I just want more Odyssey. Like I, I, I don't really understand why a year later we're not playing a, a, like a set of five worlds that Mario goes yeah. through and solves Mm-hmm. Cool puzzles. Though. I think every time we do these like direct predictions, you know, when those come around, it's somebody on the panel is always like, "Oh, this is going to be the time that we finally get that Odyssey, Odyssey DLC or the, you know those <laughs> extra those extra worlds." And like that may or may not exist, but to Sam's point, you know, like let's not forget that Nintendo has a tendency to reuse a lot of stuff or hold stuff in the back burner for a very long time, and then you know five, ten years down the road, be like, "Well, this is actually a concept we came up with for X game, but now we're putting it into this." So. The fact that Toad has DLC this week or whenever it's out soon. It's this week. It's, yeah, I think yeah, it's today actually. Yeah, which is that a Mario Wednesday. Odyssey doesn't. It's just, it seems weird to me. And you know, a Toad, I don't know. Have you played we'll Captain Toad? It it's pretty great. Yeah, it we'll is. talk about it. It did, did come out way before. Yeah, <laughs> way, yeah, true. Before. way before. So maybe they've been sitting on that for a long time. Uh, but in terms of perfect Mario games i know what i don't want i don't want new super mario brothers i really don't like that series mm. it's fun and it works but it's ugly and i, I don't want to play and it we just got a port with some extra content so yeah i'd agree fun. i want i want a mo- another 3d mario uh, another odyssey or galaxy style game rather than or even 3d world right uh the, the thing though is i i want i don't know specifically what i want i just want nintendo to surprise us they're so good at this is very very difficult while Zach is taking a selfie uh, they're they're so good at just like 
sh- doing something I'm not going to expect, like Mario in space, right? Was like nobody really expected something like that when they did it. And Odyssey was, again, surprising, but a little bit more down to earth. And I, I just want them to just do another weird thing with Mario because I, I think they almost always when they try to go stranger, like knock it out of the park and make something that really, really works and it still feels like Mario. All right. And Sunshine got a lot of hate, but you know what? I like Sunshine's it. great. I just imagine every Mario pitch meeting is them showing up late and then having like a panic attack in the meeting. They're like, uh, it's Mario, but this time he's got a jetpack that's water. Or uh, <laughs> he goes to space with Yoshi. Like, no, you know? I, I think Sunshine might be just as good of a game as Odyssey. Wow. And I definitely like them this I, I like Sunshine I like, a lot. I like, space. <laughs> I like Sunshine so much though. It's mainly it's mainly that Sunshine got a lot Sunshine fell prey to the like new Zelda game trope of like it came out and nobody like everyone was mad at it and then five, ten years later people were like, Oh, Sunshine's great. What are you talking about? This game's awesome. And and I agree. I loved Sunshine at the time and I still do, but yeah, I, I want them to just I do weird stuff again. That's a that's a really like just a common occurrence. I feel like in modern games in general, where things will come out and be critically or, or culturally derided, and then years down the road, you know, people will look back on it more fondly than they did at the initial release, and vice versa. You know, things might come out and people will be really hot on them, and then you know, a few years down the line, be like, ah, that game wasn't actually that good. Right. Um, if you ever want to hear how much Sam does love uh, Super Mario Sunshine, uh, there's a really great episode of Retronauts, uh, who they that's just a really awesome podcast that that drills down on specific older games and they did an episode about Super Mario Sunshine and Sam was a guest on that episode and it's I think I relentlessly defended it's three guys <laughs> absolutely destroying and hating Super Mario Sunshine and then <laughs> Sam talking about how how great it is like it's it's a really good episode I mean I would I'd game. be down for Super Mario Sunshine 2 and then they can take the concepts that everyone really liked and then just That's fix the type it of game which it. I bet Nintendo just made and tabled <laughs> it's just gone Aww. it's out there somewhere it's like not worth. There are such big gaps between 3D Mario games, mm-hmm. you know, and I like the Galaxy games, but I don't love them, and I don't think they're they're as fun to return to as. Back space again, just disapproval. You know? I just, well, I just, I, I like the idea of having the the kind of the hub world and solving puzzles and like kind of like unlocking secrets and stuff. And Galaxy was just like, start run to the end line, run to the end line, run to the end line over and over again. Hmm. And they did a really good job with that, but it was more like Super Mario Brothers versus Mario World. Okay, okay, I, 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 yeah, I'll agree to that, I guess. Those Maybe. 3D World games are pretty cute, though. I like yeah, those. I like that. Those yeah. are fun. So there's so many types of Mario game now, huh? Yeah, there's. If you like, just go down all the different the party, like, varieties there's of tennis, them. you yeah. just have. I mean, if all you had in your library were Mario games, you'd have a very wide variety. Everybody but I think Sam's, the last golf game. I think Sam's even talking about just like as as platforms. Just, there's yeah. so many different. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I think like of Odyssey. Angle. Yeah, <laughs> I think of Odyssey as like a direct sequel to to 64. Yeah, I mean, like to me, that's you know that exactly. might as well be like Super Mario 65. That's a really catchy name. Uh-uh. Super Mario 128. No. <laughs> I love playing Mario uh, uh, so much, uh, Mario 64 so much. We're playing in the office all, as like a team right now. We're trying to get to 120 stars by the end of the week. Yeah, you and, can tell um, that Pear is out of the office this week. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to do it as the true test. Um, uh, but uh, when, you, when I'm playing that game, I also know that like that could go, like I could take, you know when they made it for DS, they added some stars? Like I would love a remake of that that looks pretty good and then like add some stars for Switch. I mean that would be a really, really cool remake to tackle right now. It's funny because this this is probably the first time that I've played Super Mario uh, 64 in since I played it on the DS. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's wild how natural it feels to pick up that 64 controller and like Thank immediately, goodness, right? I mean, immediately weird, I did it? a triple jump. Immediately I did a, remembered how to do a backflip or the stop and turn, and like it was just like, oh yeah, it's, this game is always, always going to be this good. It's yeah. weird how our muscle memory works for games that we played for like hundreds of hours oh, yeah. when we were kids. Well, it also helps that Nintendo kept those mechanics true fairly close throughout well, the series. That's the thing that bothers me about the new Super Mario Brothers series is like I feel like specifically that series, the physics are bizarro. Mm. Like that, that the gravity is a little different. It feels and so floatier and there's so much floatier. Yeah. Whereas like the 3d Mario's, I feel like you can always predict exactly where you're going to land and how you're going to move, you know? Yeah. So moving on from everyone's favorite plumber, the most anticipated game of the year, Labo VR. <laughs> but this is a, a announcement that we kind of missed last week because they announced it literally 10 minutes after we got out of the studio. I was going to say, you probably studio. were in the studio when it was announced. <laughs> the recording <laughs> curse, man. Yeah. I thought, I thought Zach was kidding. When he <laughs> I thought you were about joking. it. Oh, yeah, because I was at home. Yeah, I was working from home on, last week. Re- recovering from your wisdom teeth removal. Yeah. I'm sorry that you had to deal with that again. Well, okay. Everybody can hear the difference. Yeah, and my voice is much <laughs> higher now. <Yeah. laughs> 
pure teeth. But, um, yeah, it's coming out on April 12th. Um, it comes with, a, there's VR goggles and blaster as a pack. The camera and elephant as a pack. And the bird and wind pedal. And I think the most interesting of the pack is the bird because you're putting your face into a bird butt. And I have no idea what kind of games are going to go with that. That's what the staff seemed to be most excited about. The bird butt. It was the bird butt. Yeah, I, I, mean, like, I like the elephant face. I'm trying, yeah, to, see some, I'm trying to see what's in those too. birds' guts. <laughs> but That's we're gonna, how you do it. We're going to get games like, um, like so Master Sword Attack and Star Fox Cockpit and some other games that go with it. I mean, I'll play a Zelda game with VR, right? Like, mm-hmm. which, whatever. Which thing good. do you wear? Probably the, gosh, I don't know. The it's elephant. The blaster? The, for, for, the, for the Zelda thing? Yeah. It's probably elephant. Probably right? the elephant? It's like the trunk of the sword or something Oh, like that. maybe? Uh-huh. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to find out. But I'm excited to see someone <laughs> wearing an elephant face <laughs> on I, their head in the office. I am, uh, maybe this is the unpopular opinion, I'm extremely skeptical of this. I'm yeah. very excited about it, but extremely skeptical. Oh, mm-hmm. The two PC fanboys in the office hating on the <laughs> Me and Dan, yeah, you mean? Yeah. yeah. If you want to read a full article, we have an article out called, um, Is Nintendo's Label VR Going to Be Worth It? And it's uh, Dan's negative opinion versus Max's optimistic, this is for kids and it's fine opinion and you should read it. It's a good Yeah, and if you want to see a full-grown man have a meltdown on Twitter about a child's toy, follow Dan Stapleton on Twitter. <laughs> Harsh, it was an interesting man. format for the article because uh, Max gave like an impassioned, cool critique of the Labo and then Dan just typed no 50,000 times. <laughs> and we published it. We just ran with it, you know? What are we what are we to say? He's our reviews editor. So yeah, so one thing I do? one thing I do want to say in regards to Labo VR that is not just hater hater hater, but trying to set people's expectations a little bit. Uh, this is a thing that you're not strapping to your head, right? It's like you're holding the actual devices up against your face. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I feel like we shouldn't be expecting any big games with Mm-mm. it, right? These will These be like VR be, experiences. Yeah, they're going to yeah. be bite-sized things. If you've played with any of Valve's the Lab stuff on Vive, I imagine it's going to be stuff like that, real quick, real quick mini games that you're playing with these yeah. things. I don't think we're going to be getting, you know, super hot VR on no. Nintendo Labo or anything like You'd that. You'd probably have the cardboard fling off your face and break <laughs> yeah. your Switch. I mean, I... I, I it's an unfavorable comparison, but I really like the Virtual Boy. But it is this is the most like the Virtual Boy that, mm. Nintendo, that Nintendo's gotten in a long time. That that system you couldn't strap on your face; you had to uh, kind of crouch and look into a stand for it. You can tell they're they're not doing that. <laughs> I think they want, it, but that would solve a lot of the problems. But you know, they want you, I think, moving one arm and holding it up. But like, mm-hmm. if you guys have ever like just held binoculars up to your face, like that, you get tired Never pretty have. fast. Like you get you get yeah. five minutes with them looking at the stars at night or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, a counterpoint to that is that if they did make it so it was a thing that you strapped on your head, uh, some, one of the kind of like unseen design features of a lot of VR headsets is counterweights. They have weights in the back uh-huh. that balance out so that you don't have this big heavy thing pulling on your head. So if it's they a, just made it out I love of, it with like the strings down pulleys down to the ground. It's all like this cardboard contraption you stand in. Just the counterweight, the, the labo in your face. They already did that. They made you, they built the robot. The robot, kit. I yeah. know. They could totally do it that way. That'd be pretty amazing. But the, the argument basically there is just that if they did make it where the thing that strapped to your face, like it could get really tiring and comfortable mm-hmm. in a different way. So that wouldn't necessarily solve the problem. Now I'm worried about you specifically, Tom, because you're a big cigar smoker. And I'm worried if you have, <laughs> if you have cardboard on your head like that, it could catch on fire and it'd be really scary. So are you saying I'm going to be smoking cigars while playing laptop? Well, I see how you review games. You generally have a big stogie in your mouth and you enjoy <laughs> what yourself. This slander. Just slander. This and bridge builders. You guys just lying about me all the time. Sam also wrote that article about you smoking cigars, so it's also libel. <laughs> yeah. It just says no, 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 and it has a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the tech specs, right? Like, I think that that's part of Dan's whole um, oh, yeah. tirade against, mm-hmm. the, against the VR version they're incredibly of, uh, valid criticism. You, you got to, well, you got to remember, Dan is a guy who Meow. like saw the terrible early days of VR and lived it first. Yeah, we were all there, yeah, right. But like he 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 knows what it's like, and he's coming from a place in his article where it's like the original uh, Oculus dev kit was less than a 720p screen, and I think it was the same or a lower frame rate, and it was or. Or excuse me, it was a higher than a 720p screen, and it was the same frame rate. It was 60 FPS, and it was like made you sick. Yeah, well, the so frame rate and the lower... refresh rate of a screen like that, like that's what that's what sends the signals to your brain, like, hey, you're not moving correctly, and right. we should probably throw up. And I I assume that Nintendo has, like, they don't release terrible broken things usually. So if they've got they've I probably got it to a place where it's going to work in bite sized experiences, but. 
I'm still like really skeptical. I, I mean, I have the faith in, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there that they don't release subpar right. products, right? They're not like, going to release that, something that just makes everyone sick. I think that they, they are going to figure out the reason that you don't strap this thing to your head and, and play through Breath of the Wild in first person. Like, I think it's because they're, they're establishing that this is specifically built for like bite size experiences, right? Like you're only supposed to be in it for a few minutes at a time or whatever the case might be. But like, I can't imagine that they would go out there and be like, this is a full blown VR headset. Like, please put this on your face and play, you know, Super Mario Odyssey. Like, yeah. Have you guys seen all of Black Mirror or a lot of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like there's one over overarching theme that's basically in every episode, which is like, never let people install something that, that in your brain that will make you see things. Right. Yeah. There's don't don't let that happen <laughs> because you can't take it out. And I think yeah. Nintendo probably saw those are like we just need to make it really easy for people to get this VR out of their face. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's also I mean it's a safety thing. It's also really interesting because I feel like every episode it's like why did you put that in your in your brain, dummy? Haven't they said publicly that they weren't exploring any of the any VR technology? I sure. feel like I I want to say that Nintendo has has said that on record. Well, this is cardboard Zach, so can you call it technology? I mean, they're calling it <laughs> VR. Like <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, like um <laughs> But I, I do think that that's interesting because we've we've hypothesized on this show like what would Nintendo VR look and mm -hmm. feel like, and uh, I think Pear said it to me you know maybe even a month ago he was he, if they were to ever go VR it would be something to do with Labo, mm -hmm. and here we are. Hey whoa like <laughs> yeah smart guy. So moving on we got an, an announcement for Dead Cells which was our um, action game of the year last year mm -hmm. so really high accolade I think a lot mm -hmm. of people really liked it. Um, we're getting the free update is coming on March 28th for the PC. We don't have the date for the Switch just yet, but it's coming with a, like, a new area called the Caverns, 50 outfits, 10 new enemies, three new skills, 10 weapons. One of the weapons is called the Boy Axe, which is a callback to God of War, which is fun. Oh, boy. Yeah, boy. and an axe. Spelled with an I. Yeah, with an I. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I really like Dead Cells. I'm not a side-scrolling platformy type game person, but I actually really like Dead Cells. Yeah, this is a cool update, and and in regards to date, usually these updates don't follow too far behind on the mm -hmm. consoles, so, you know, probably sometime early April, I'd imagine it comes to Switch. Maybe, don't hold me to that, though. Um, this is this is cool, because not only are we getting a whole new area called the Caverns with a new boss, there's actually a whole, like, hidden area that is going to be like For hardcore players yeah right? it's like a super hard area that is going to add an alternate ending to the game which is kind of crazy and cool like it, they're they're doing a lot to keep this game alive uh yeah i i, I guess my question about this is like is this enough for you to want to go back to dead cells uh personally I, I i played so much of it when it came out and when i got to the end of that game uh, literally dropped my switch and was like, "Great, I did it. I never have to look at this game again because it's like so hard and so yeah. punishing." You like think your skills would be rusty too. Oh God, yeah. But like, I I enjoyed my time with it. But at the end of it, I was like, I never want to play this again. Like, I did it. I beat mm -hmm. it, and that's it for me. Like, Wait, how long did Zach? it take you? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's seven full weeks. Oh no, no I don't. What if I don't what remember. if what if I what if I say this? They're adding cosmetics. No, I don't care. <laughs> no, sorry. You can make your character look cool. I do think it's cool that like a lot of those cosmetics, like they they talk about fifty outfits here, but I bet you like we get like exclusive stuff on the Switch. Do you like, you know, like That'd little Breath cool. of the Wild outfit yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't. I just realized that I'm winking aggressively at you, but like <laughs> nobody can see that. So my threshold for returning to DLC, I've realized it's. I'm not trying for this, but it's so high. I, like Breath of the Wild, I played all the DLC. I mm -hmm. love Trial of the Sword, but that's like my favorite game in the, of the past thirty years. You know? I, I didn't realize you were into that game. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, but Resident Evil Two this year, I adore that game. I, I played uh, straight through the post game runs. I did all the tofu stuff, and then the DLC came out, and I was so excited, but I never played it. <laughs> but well, DLC sounds, like just like, came I, out though. That was only like two weeks ago. Yeah, but I'm never gonna go back now. Why? Because like, we it's just different here. It's, like, it's different when you work in an industry where you have to play all the latest stuff. And I've moved on. I've played like three games since then, and I haven't liked any of them. And I should be just be playing Resident Evil Two. Well, well a game a game with the oh, early yeah, are you access. Still playing Kingdom Hearts? No, oh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> don't make him talk. I am about playing that. Devil May Cry though. Yeah. Ooh, uh, a game with the early access lineage of a game like talk Dead Cells too is, oh man, uh, is you. The nice thing is if you have a high threshold for DLC and updates, you can probably like I don't know if they're going to keep updating it, but you could probably wait another year and come back, and there'll be a lot of new stuff in and Dead maybe Cells. Maybe you get it for nine ninety nine with everything in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is a free update, so they're going to keep 
as far as I know, this just one's free. keep doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's cool. free. Yeah, so That's probably neat. more and more will come. So if you don't want to jump right back in for just like a couple new areas, you could probably wait a little, like a few more months and get more and more. It's hard to think of like critically, like what was DLC that really mattered that like we all like all agree that it's like, man, that was the way to do it. It just doesn't happen that often. Yeah, I guess Zelda. I'm trying to think of other games that came out with more DLC recently that, I mean, I'm looking forward to Monster Hunter World's DLC later this year. Almost uh, everything I mean, has Splatoon it, 2 had a oh, huge expansion right. last year. Yeah. A single player drop for Splatoon seemed really cool. It was mm -hmm. really cool. It was super yeah. cool. Uh, we got At least some... that's like a persistent game that people keep playing. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of like we got some go. DLC for Mario. Yeah. Are we talking um, Switch only or generally? No, just generally. It's just uh, yeah. Witcher. This is a Nintendo. Uh, is that a good one? Guys? Witcher three in its first year did sixteen free updates. Well, and then in its the one year, with the fairy tale castle was super cool with the vampire. Yeah, well, that's and then uh, after uh, that, uh, blood and wine. Yeah, yeah then they did so the blood and wine expansion, and then they did the uh, or Hearts excuse me, they did Hearts of Stone expansion, and then they did blood and wine. And blood and wine was like a forty hour game, yeah. pretty much. So there's a single player game with a ton of worthwhile DLC content. Dude, yeah, the Witcher yeah. is top yes. ten. And then people say that about Skyrim too. But yeah, I, I, yeah, it never pulled me back in. Except for the horse I got, armor. I, no, oh, how far that, was, um, that was oblivion. That was oblivion. Oh, that was oblivion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll shut Skyrim up, though had the separate I, the whole island they added. Right, yeah. right, right. And they had a lot more dragon stuff. Yeah, yeah. They added the whole like vampire quest line. And Is all that stuff on Switch? It must be right. Yeah, and Skyrim. added a yeah. bunch of stuff to yeah, your werewolf, so you could just like stay a werewolf and added skill trees to it. The Monster <laughs> Hunter uh, that'll be a big DLC, right? Yeah, that'll be. Or is it a standalone? It's big DLC. What's it called? The Frozen North. That'll be a big one. Ice Iceborne. I was way off. <laughs> it's cold. The frozen wilds. That was for cold Horizon. Stuff. Yeah. The cold You're stuff. Right. <laughs> the cold stuff expansion. Mm -hmm. and hey, another game that we all really liked last year is um, Octopath Traveler. Mm -hmm. And it's been confirmed that a new console game is in the works. And before that comes out, which is we have no idea when, this year a mobile game called um, Champions of the Continent is coming to iOS and Android. Super cool. It's going to be a free-to-play game. It's a prequel. We don't technically know if it's going to come out anywhere besides Japan this year to be mm. Yeah, but totally, given given yeah. the fact that Octopath sold so well mm -hmm. and was published by Nintendo and T Nintendo's moving, you know, like a lot of stuff into their mobile efforts, I feel like we we'll probably have a pretty good chance of seeing this Octopath game on iOS or, or Android. Yeah, I can In the agree. states, yeah. Mm -hmm. Glad the style is going to live on from that game. I think it's super just, cool. Just, they knocked it out of the park with yeah. how it looks. It's um, beautiful. I, I really like the idea of having like a traditional ish uh, RPG on iOS. Like I think that that's like designed for iOS. Yeah. You know, like I, I a couple of years ago I played through a lot of Final Fantasy IX on my phone, and like that was fine. But the idea of having like a, a Square developed RPG Made on iOS, like that's that seems cool to me. I'd mm -hmm. love to play something like that. Yeah, yeah I, I would wonder if it'd be that or more like what's the most recent Nintendo mobile game that you. Dragalia Lost. Yeah. Dragalia. Mm -hmm. Something more like that or the Fire Emblem where it's like, you know, a bite-sized version that has a lot of... Gotcha stuff in know, it. So yeah, gotcha here's what they it. had to say about the game. It will feature the distinctive HD 2D art style, an eight-character party system with command-based battles, a protagonist who is the, quote, chosen one, and will fight is against... Is this the console game or the mobile This is the mobile game. Okay. And um, you will fight against a great evil that has achieved fortune, power, and fame. I'm in it for the great evil. Say yeah. no more. And you're going to get field commands back like listen and steal. Sweet. So, yeah. So it just sounds like a, a scaled down version of the original game, but it's a prequel. So that's cool. That's I'm into pretty it. rare on a phone these days just to yeah. get like a single player big RPG game. Yeah. Yeah. I'm we really interested in how it would work and if they're going to have a gotcha style thing so to get more characters to add to your party. Mm -hmm. I'm interested. I'm into it. It's shocking that you'd be interested in a gotcha style game. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, I, but you know, the like, console wise, like it, there, it is so much better to have that on Switch than anything else. Like it was yeah. great being able to play that on a plane and stuff like that, which I played mostly while I was traveling mm -hmm. and just sitting in anywhere I wanted to. And I don't know how much I want to be chained to a, a console and be playing a long RPG at this yeah. point in 2D. Yeah, I, this is the kind of game that I I brought with me. When I was on vacation, whenever I had downtime, I could just pick it up and play it for a little bit, and mm. since it, I could pause, and it's it so compartmentalized, right? Like you yeah. can go to any of the spots and like pick mm -hmm. up where you left off. I love that. Yeah, exactly. It was very relaxing for me. I liked it a lot. But I'm I did not beat to those. It. So, hey, yeah, I haven't, I haven't beaten it either. The only people in the office who beat it were Seth, who reviewed it, and, and Terry. Terry, Terry, Terry actually boss. didn't finish it. Yeah, she's, she's at the, stuck last at the last boss. boss still. Yeah, but she oh, really no. stuck with it. She played yeah. it for months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Like that was her game that she'd go yeah. play and relax and play. And like I, I thought that was really cool. I mean, yeah, I think I run into the same problem with Sam is that I'm trying to I have to move on to new games faster, mm-hmm. so I have less time to play games that I'm not specifically working on. This year has been cool. Well. I don't know. I, you can take this with a grain of salt, but with the exception of Resident Evil 2 and a couple of other things here and there, like there hasn't been a ton of stuff that I've been really, really interested in playing. So I've actually been going back and playing some older stuff that I missed, or you know. So that's been really nice. Like Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I've been playing a lot, uh, a lot of Assassin's Creed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good one. Mm-hmm. So also, um, we got a Nintendo Switch Online update with some new March games, and we're getting Kid Icarus and Star Tropics, and that those are actually available now, mm-hmm. which is why. Our wiki traffic for Star Trop- Tropics is really up because people are looking for. Did you see that? Right? I, I think I overheard. Oh, you talking I was about saying it. P- the search volume is oh, okay. for Star Tropics uh, walkthrough. Hmm. It's, it was like higher than some other terms, which yeah. I was surprised by. Mm-hmm. Um, and you need it for that game. You need a walkthrough. It's very confusing. Uh, it's not that fun of a game either. It's okay. <laughs> Tell There's us about pe- it. People that played it like, early what kind on. Of game is it? It's an RPG, okay. but it's more in the um, like um, accessible style that like. Comparable, it probably would compare favorably to Zelda at the time, though I don't think it's a Zelda like top down, hit stuff, walk around, solve puzzles. So um, th- that game's fine. But uh, Kid Icarus, I thought was a strange choice because that's the one that should be released with extra stuff. And the Zelda 2 version that they released is mm-hmm. a s- brilliant idea, and I know we're going to get to that. Mm-hmm. But Nintendo did a 3DS version of Kid Icarus a while ago yeah. where they made him float Uprising. a little bit. Not that game. Uh, 3D Kid Icarus. Uh, it was called uh, NES Classics 3D Kid Icarus, and uh, it was just Kid Whoa. Icarus, and you, could, and you could put on the uh, the 3D effect and like draw into the background. You know, cool. Like rebate 3D Kid Icarus of the NES game, and it made you it added floatiness and it balanced a couple other things out, and it made it so possible to play it. It made it was so fun, but Kid Icarus like standalone is way too hard and not that fun anymore. Hmm. Hmm. So I wish they had been giving it the treatment that uh, as, as yeah. I'm sure you're going to segue into. Yeah, so, yeah, like, um, as Sam was saying, we're getting special editions of Kirby's Adventure and Zelda 2. And for Kirby's Adventure, adventure that means you start with 100% game. What? what? Why? What did I sure. just say? <laughs> no, like, why would you start with 100%? That's it. This is has- funny. Kirby's Adventure, except this time, you don't have to play you it. You don't have to play it. <laughs> um, so yeah. it that is, the start that button is, the that is a good roll. reason. <laughs> it automatically unlocks every difficult of all the mini games. It lets you start a new game on hard mode. Which well, you need to do because the game the is too easy. It's yeah. really smart. So it lets you start auto- already on hard mode. You don't okay. have to go through it. So it's it. the opposite of what they're doing with Zelda 2. Yes. With which Zelda 2, you start with max attack, magic, and life at level 8. So you can start the game with everything maxed which, out so it's easier. Which I love. Like it's I think Zelda 2 idea. I think Zelda 2 is a cool game. But it took, and I know you have so, sort of a similar story. Yep. It took me like four or five attempts. Like I tried that game so many times, started it, and was just like, this sucks. It's too hard. And put it down and then come back to it like years later. Uh, before I finally got through it. And the idea that you start with max attack, max magic, um, a life level of eight, that'll make that game so much easier. You will have to grind so much less at the beginning. Um, and so those of, you know, the people that haven't had the opportunity to play through Zelda or if Zelda 2 or have found it too challenging, like this is a great way to play it now. Like it's super cool. It's worth playing just to see cool graphics, uh, see all these references that other games make to it. Like all the characters in that game are names of places in Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Like you wouldn't know that unless you play it. And then like there's a really, really good set of dungeons and puzzles and overworld that if you don't have to worry about dying, you can actually like learn a lot about the history of Zelda by playing that game. And it's such a different so Zelda game. Like it's so, so different from any other game in that franchise. And it's really good music too. I tried playing this game for the first time when it came out on that, uh, the GameCube collectors uh-huh. mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. with Nintendo power. I yeah. think. And I did not get very far in it, but having this new special edition is really enticing to try and go back and beat it. It's, it's, it's not a super long game either. Yeah, you can yeah. get through it pretty fast. It's a wonderful game. Like it is, it's a, it's a great, cool, interesting Shigeru Miyamoto designed game. That if you have like, any respect for the craft and like really want to see like what what all the options were when Zelda started, like that game is the weirdest, strangest spin off Zelda game. And the way I think to play it uh, before now was save states. Save states made it really, really much mm. more tolerable to play. And so now like this is a way to get around like this kind of obsessive save state version of playing which what I did also I had Jared Petty helped me and, and if you guys just uh, I suggest you do that he was in the office at the time so I was able to say like yeah it was his favorite Zelda game and favorite game of all time right no uh, I think Jared's favorite Zelda game and I kid Twilight you not Princess. is That's Twilight right. Princess yeah, yeah. but he always oh, says really? Zelda 2 yeah. is his favorite game in some context I can't remember what it is yeah Maybe a famous NES game but uh, he uh, was able to, but I, I recommend everybody out there use that same resource so when you get stuck in Zelda 2 just uh, at Jared Petty 
and he'll help you. He'll help you through it. Once a wiki's guide, always a wiki's guide. Exactly. So hey, let's move on to some news. And so I don't know if you guys are interested in this, but they released Fire Emblem Three Houses English theme like on a, a Nintendo Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna play you guys some of that track. I think. Let's see if this works. All right, and it's not blaringly loud. I fixed it, Zach. Cool. <laughs> um, so we're getting... How do you feel, Sam? I have a single tear Sam, rolling down my giant mustache Sam just that covers look, my whole body. Sam just looked like he was having a tough time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting another game with an, an like lyrical theme song, like we did with Smash. And mm. this is something that's kind of new. And we did with Odyssey. Yeah, same thing. Okay, yeah. What do you guys think about getting theme songs with lyrics in them now? Well, as someone who just finished Persona 5, I am totally on board with video game songs with lyrics in them. I am all about that new trend, if it's not even a new trend. But I, I don't know. I I'm feel super like it's cool new for it. Nintendo. It's definitely new for Nintendo. I'm yeah. cool with it, and I, I, I think it's neat. It's like a very Japanese, very anime-leaning sort of thing. Yeah, like, all about it. Square, like the intro song. Square Enix has always, always done this. The first game that they did it for was Final Fantasy VIII. They did, uh, they had a love theme from Final Fantasy VIII called Eyes on Me, and that was like the big, t- the first time that I remember. Like, yeah, that's how it goes. Eyes on me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a good song, uh, but uh, they've been doing that forever. So, like, I think that it's really cool that Nintendo is doing this because it, like, it helps you associate, you know, so much more emotion, so much more like, oh yeah, this is the song from that game. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I still get it. the 10-2 theme stuck in my head sometimes. Sometimes. Sing it right now. Um, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> Were they? That's the game where they're dancers, right? Yes, yeah. they are dancers, um, and that is the intro song. <laughs> When I hear this, I'm it just sorry makes for my me think about uh, when you're at E3 and the Nintendo booth only has one song and loop the whole time, <laughs> <laughs> and, and like the Super Mario Odyssey, dude. But Super Mario Odyssey, you just so hear it constantly. That year, uh, you guys don't have not experienced like that level of of. I remember I said this to Tom. I was like, I never want to hear Jump Up Superstar again in my life. And he's like, Why? I love that song. It's so catchy. And it's like. For four days straight on the E3 show floor, because our booth was right across from Nintendo's, it was just Jump Up Superstar on loop over and over again. And I remember I went to uh, uh, their booth to play Odyssey that year, and I ran into a friend of mine who was working at, for their PR team, and I was like, oh, hey, uh, how do you feel about this song? And she was like, I want to die. Like, I just I hate it so much. Like, I, just, I hate it because she was in the booth. Like, it, yeah, it's, it's like so working brutal. retail during Christmas time. You hear oh, yeah. the same four songs over oh, yeah. and over again for a month. Who doesn't uh, love rocking around the Christmas tree, though? Well, right? hey, maybe oh, this God. year we'll go to the E3 booth and let, get to hear this song over and over on repeat. I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, the Fire Emblem themed E3 booth, that's all they have. Do, so <laughs> this is something that I was thinking about earlier this week with um, Pokemon, Fire Emblem. Uh, maybe Animal Crossing. Uh, Animal Crossing. Those three. Well, I guess we have a date for Fire Emblem or a date-ish. Let's Awakening. Your Link's Awakening. So what what is going to be the theme of their booth? Because the last few years, first it was uh, 2016 was Zelda, 2017 was Odyssey, and 20 Smash. 18 Smash. last year was Smash. Yeah, but it was. Uh, but the I'm last trying to but, think of it, it wasn't only Smash. Yeah, exactly. So they com- finally broke up again. Yeah. It was like, but like it was, it w- it was an open stage set this year. Mm-hmm. Like in the previous years, they've had some more of like a close like. Uh, 2017, it was New Donk City, and it had the balloon and Mario. Those two years and, when and it was Zelda only a... one game, I yeah. loved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like last year, they they brought back like you could play tennis on the floor and you could yeah. play other stuff. Yeah. But it was you know basically themed around a stage. The they stage had itself had the the big uh, key art with all the characters on yeah, it. Yeah, and then the they, had they had the weapons announced. for every single. Yeah, that was character. really cool. They had a lot more nindies at E3 this year, and they had Killer Queen Black, and they had a lot of oh, other. I think they had so Towerfall good. on the floor. Maybe, maybe I'm misremembering that. I think they had Pokemon. Let's go too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they, the, let's go. Yeah, but they didn't have like themed stuff on the floor. I wouldn't be surprised go if they're full Pokemon, but I think they're just gonna do kiosk stuff. I guess this is a bigger conversation, but yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if this year was just no one center game and it was a lot of mm-hmm. little things. Yeah, I would like so much for it to be uh, Pokemon themed. Yeah. Like, I think it'd be Pokemon. so cool if it was themed after that like major city with the big that's clock so, tower from yeah, the new exactly. the new trailer. Oh, that'd I'd be, be so, cool. so into and, it. And like the the side panels would be like you know the countryside. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I mean, uh, they, they could just nail that. Theme. I mean, the way that they did the way that they did Hyrule in exactly. 2016 that was, was awesome. absolutely nuts. Yep. 
Yeah. And they closed it so you couldn't you had to get in and you had to go well, through it was more you immersive. had to go through a shrine to get into it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh god, that was so cool. <laughs> I went to that booth so many times. Yeah, I went I in like I two or three times. Sneak I had someone like sneak me in just so I could like see it. You can't say that on a podcast. <laughs> I think I met you that year that year. You did, yeah. That was the year um that I met you guys. Mm-hmm. Um you and Jared. Mm-hmm. It was a fun time. What a little trip down memory lane we did, yeah. guys. <laughs> nice work. But we were already working together. It's just we met in person. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you started in January but didn't move out here until... Well, that was when no, I was a was freelancer. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was there. I was actually representing GameSpot's booth next to your booth. Mm-hmm. I was able to sneak away and then write for wikis at the end of the show. can't say GameSpot day. on an IGN. What were, you doing, <laughs> what were you doing wiki-wise at that conference? Um, Pokemon. Pokemon Center. Shocking. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like be standing across from the Nintendo booth and watching them like announce all this new stuff while I'm like at the GameSpot booth, not able to go to my computer. And like mm-hmm. at the very end, I'd like immediately go to the computer and update everything at night. Yeah. <laughs> See, that time. is a model for you. That's how you get a job at IGN. <laughs> <laughs> Just Just nailed work. it. Work until your fingers bleed. <laughs> Just <laughs> Whenever something new happens, update it immediately. But then immediately. you get the job and you can just relax. Yeah. And yeah, Casey. Yeah, yeah I'm just t- like, talk to me about Monster Hunter. How relaxing was that experience? I, I only worked like two hours a day. It's, it's <laughs> no, fine. that was sleep. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, that's you're right. My brain's a little scrambled. But keg of wine. But keg of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Empty keg. The of real wine. reason you work here. So really quick, I just wanted to mention that Twitch is playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate now, and it is a complete mess. And it's, dude, I love Twitch when Twitch plays like this well, community Twitch stuff. Twitch plays Pokemon was the best. Yeah. It, it came with like the best memes that you. That was amazing it was great. time. Yeah, it was a good time. I don't know if Smash Bros. Ultimate is going to come up with the same memes because playing an action game as Twitch plays is incredibly difficult. And if you're mm. unfamiliar with how that works, people in the chat will input how, like what to do. So they'll be like press A or like hold help, hold up to like get around the map and yeah. fight and it's usually and it selects half the time. one action like every couple seconds or yeah something like it's that. like whatever is being put in the most mm-hmm. so there's it's difficult to time it it was much easier with pokemon which is like press a or right like you would know how to is there like a mode that this is tied to someone programs it they're on they're in world of light they're playing world oh of that's light. what i was yeah so yeah, it is in world the single of light. player world of light yeah they're trying, trying to, to unlock get all the characters that's so yeah. that's going to be so complicated because you have to go into your menu and like equip different spirits and stuff yeah, to get someone some would of those be like we're going like... into the menu and we're going to equip healing <laughs> spirits <laughs> all right go and then everyone like tries to and it's it. always 50 percent troll right <laughs> yeah. but i remember really there cool. was like off hours times in which it got like a little quieter and things got done in pokemon during the best times four o'clock in the morning which place yep um, there's also um, some really switch. Nintendo Switch has a really good deal going on until March 16th. So if you're late to listening to this, I'm really sorry. But um, I think the best deal is on Walmart. It comes with a third-party controller and some like Mario pins. Mm-hmm. But um, I think Switch everywhere right now is on sale. So yeah, I saw that deal and mm-hmm. it was like a Nintendo Switch, a controller, a game half off. And I was like, well, I have a Switch. I don't need a controller. I have this. And then it was like and pins. And I was like, do I need a second Switch right now? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, it's it's three hundred and thirty dollars for all of that stuff right now, and you yeah you get your choice of Mario game for half off. Like, That's pretty great. So if you don't already have a Switch, this is a good deal. There's actually yeah. a surprising amount of listeners to NVC that write in every week and they're like, oh yeah, when I get a Switch, like you mm-hmm. know that'll be really cool. So me. hey, we recommend you get Odyssey or Cart, yeah, depending on your setup and your house. Mm-hmm. If you want multiplayer, get cart. If you want a single player, get Odyssey. We're party for that matter. Party's pretty good. Party mm. party is good. I like party for multiplayer. I feel like it was a little bit lacking in content compared to previous Mario parties. I think the easier question is would Did you, you recommend Mario party game? over Odyssey to someone getting uh, a switch? Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's Depends. still a really have, fun party game. If you have like, you know, a bunch of kids or something, that'd be fun. Yeah. Play. I would hope mm. cart would be a better party game than party in every scenario. I hope. Because you can still play cart single Party's player. Party's right have a there good time. in the title. <laughs> It's called it's Mario Party. party. It's yeah, good for yeah, a party. Plus, you can flip that meat. That's pretty cool. That I love the meat game. <laughs> you can also cook great. the meat. Yeah. 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 That meat cube. It, the Shake flipping, candy the out flipping of a jar. is the important part. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good game. But hey, there are some new games out this week. Um, first one, Tom, I know you put this on here originally last week, but we didn't get to talk about it. Valley. Yeah, I just, I just wanted a quick mention. We, I think we actually gave it like a five when we reviewed it. Our reviewer did not like it. And the... The opinion is split, but it's one to just take an, a look at. Like, don't immediately go run out the door mm-hmm. and grab it. But uh, it's this game where you 
get this thing called a leaf suit and you can run like insanely fast. It kind of harkens back if anybody played Tribes. It feels very quick with that momentum. Is it 3D like Tribes? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so a you get like, momentum and you're like going up and down hills. Yeah, a little hell. bit. It's uh, kind of like the fantasy if you've ever like, that's a common dream people have mm. is that they figured out they could run and like fly. That's right. where those kind of game designs come from. Uh, there's a less mm. successful kind of life and death killing combat mechanic within it uh, and it's a pretty short game it's only like three to four hours but it's just one that in an age where you know a lot of stuff can get lost it might be worth looking at I know like if you go on Metacritic or Open Critic, the scores on it range from like nine to five like it is really a divisive game and so just take a look okay and another game that's out today which is Wednesday for us March 13th is Baba is You and Woo! I know we've talked about this a lot in previous episodes and i haven't gotten yeah. to play it yet have you gotten to play it yet yeah yeah right. thomas playing it this morning when I'm i went over all his about desk. it yeah. this is the game of the words and the black screen stuff yeah, yeah you yes. play as baba because baba is you well unless you play as rock because rock is you or also wall. robot is you or robot flag. robot was me for a bit uh there's a lot it's a weird game it's impossibly weird to describe the the rules of the game are text on the screen and you can push them around like blocks so and change the rules you're essentially doing like super basic programming N- not even that. No, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm with Zach here, and I haven't seen or played this game. It's it's a puzzle game fundamentally, and it, programming is like. Uh, but the I way think you a little more freedom than a, this game has. But the way that the words are are, are permutable like that allows you to switch the rules around like at, yeah. yeah at your own will. So maybe yes. that's a, a better way. And to it's put like eight it. bit, yeah. top down looking. Kind it's of very simple. It's almost like crayon drawings, okay. the art style. It's very very like intentionally sort of childish looking. Uh, I'm about two or three hours into it, and I am in love with it so far. I know that there's apparently some people saying some of the, like, once you get to the, like, 100-plus levels, right, you're like, it, it kind of isn't as amazing, but I'm really excited to get there. Uh, this is a game that has won multiple IGF awards over the years. It has been hotly anticipated for a while. Oh, the so. Imagine Games Fet work? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> It's quite a niche joke. Um, yeah, so it's it's a very, very cool puzzle game. Uh, I'm very excited to play more of it. I know, Casey... I'm super excited for yeah. this. And I've been really looking forward to Brian, it. Brian was saying he was looking forward to playing it, too. So, yeah, one to look at. So another game, or DLC, that's out today is uh, the Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, and it's out on March 13th. Um, the co-op update is free, so if you have that game, you can play it co-op now. And for $5.99, you get 18 new challenges across five new courses, and some of those courses are actually based on Mario Odyssey stages. Mm-hmm. Nice. So, Look, it'd be pretty cool. I am a Captain Toad evangelist. <laughs> I love Captain Toad. I think it's like one of the best Nintendo like IPs that's come out in the last few years. I think it's so smart and so fun and challenging. Like when you really like if you're really looking to get everything 100% that game, it's tough. And I'm just so excited that there's more Captain Toad to play cuz like I played it on the Wii U. I played it when it came to Switch and I blew through it. And so when I saw that in the direct uh, last month, I was just so stoked that that, that they went back and added cuz I I thought they were absolutely done with Captain Toad. Well, and this is one of those games that's a really good example of how Nintendo should be doing DLC where it's it's by design these digestible little screens with a bunch of things little going Little dioramas. On. Yeah, and so the idea of just like, oh yeah, I'll pay $5 every six months for more Captain Toad levels, like I don't think they're going to do that probably, but it's so cool. Like I would totally do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, he's just so cute. <laughs> he is. I t- a Captain Toad for Smash. Captain Toad Ooh. has always been one of my Smash Let's do it. Yeah. Can you guys all do Toad impressions? No. No. Uh-uh. I'm terrible. Sam, give us yours. I don't think I can either. I what? just like what he sounds like. What? Are, say, Sam just was like, it's me, Captain Toad. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am. Hey. <laughs> Let's go on an adventure. So, hey, what are you guys playing? Uh, what can we talk about? Uh, well, yeah. So You guys can talk about Yoshi. Yeah, you guys uh, go first. Yeah, I've been playing Yoshi. Sam and I played co-op. And it was fun. I'll Yoshi's just back Crafted up what Tom says because I don't know what I'm allowed to say. Uh, yeah, so we, no, I do. we got Yoshi's Crafted World. Yep. Uh, there's a previews of folk just went up. Uh, we have a whole this month I, IGN first that's going up. So we've been posting levels that you can see exclusive levels on IGN.com. Uh, and then the game doesn't come out until like the 29th. So we have to be a little careful about what we say because there's different embargo-y thingies. Um, but it's super cool and I've been enjoying it. And it's like it's kind of what I was expecting from Yoshi, a Yoshi game, right? Like, it's very fun. It's not overly complex. It's not overly difficult. And it's a cool Yoshi game. And like, where do you stand in Yoshi's story? 
uh, I, I think Yoshi's Story is great, and, and you two think the, it's terrible. What did the office say when you said that? You no, not the office. You two sitting right here, <laughs> Zach but and you Sam. Two, yeah, Zach and Sam. We're like Yoshi's Story is a terrible game. I don't know what you guys are talking. Do about. Not, I believe I Justin was in on that, and Damon was too, okay, okay, and fair, everybody sitting over there. <laughs> I think Yoshi's story is great. I think that music will be in my brain until the day I die. Yeah. And I I like all the Yoshi games. Um, not necessarily my favorite Nintendo platformers, but they're just like, they're always reliable, I feel like. They're just fun games. Yeah, the reason I, I brought it up is because I think that people are worried that this will be, and I'm worried, that this will be too simple and be too much like Yoshi's story, not enough like Yoshi's Island. Mm. But I played enough of it with you that I can allay but, those fears. I, I don't think it's like that. I think it's a... a, a a I don't complex think it's a- enough game that, that you'll be entertained by. Yeah, and th- one of the things that I've been noticing is, like, this is a very Nintendo-y style as well. Uh, basically, every level is some new mechanic, right, or new thing, new gimmick. Uh, and they start out simple and then get a little more complex and then get harder by the end of it. Uh, and then you basically don't see it again. And that's kind of... It keeps this game, even though it is very simple and it is, like, I mean, not overly simple, but it is pretty easy. Each level is pretty easy. Unless you're it's playing always, with a friend and then it's just Oh, then it's just, chaos. Yeah, it's total chaos. It's madness. Uh, the, co-op, <laughs> the co-op is maybe actually busted. We played it's for like, a oh, long time, though. Yeah. yeah. Is it busted as in too easy or is it just too chaotic? It's, no, it doesn't make it easier. It makes it okay. harder. It makes it very hard. It, cool. There's a, there's yeah, a really cool... <laughs> <laughs> there's a really cool co-op option where... Uh, if you jump on somebody else's back, then the person right ri- a Yoshi riding a Yoshi is a whole thing that I don't want to get into. But uh, you can <laughs> the person know. the the riding Yoshi the rider mm-hmm. uh, is yeah say more can <laughs> can throw the eggs and the ride E gets to move. Zach is giving me eyebrows that are making me very uncomfortable. Um, and so you can basically play it double dash style, where one person controls the movement and the other person controls the attacks, and you just never need to jump off. Uh, and, but, but we never did that. No, we didn't. I don't know why. We just kind of because when you jump on somebody, you accidentally latch onto them and you lose all your darn eggs. <laughs> <laughs> no, the jumping you don't. The when you eat somebody, you oh, can yeah, grab them right. in your mouth, and then that person literally just can't get away. And then yeah. they also drop all like their eggs joint, immediately. Like joint finances. <laughs> yeah. That's an apt metaphor. It, wow. But, but, uh, but instead of your eggs combining, you lose half your eggs. Well. <laughs> it's like divorce, but you're is everything stuck okay, with the Casey? Yeah. Are you That's all right? what it's more like. I mean, you know, it's more like the divorce, but you're stuck with the person. Yeah, no, it's you lose half your stuff, but you're still married. <laughs> <laughs> you're closer than ever. Isn't that what happens when you have a kid? Oh man, I'm this sorry. is dark. No, really I went off I, the rails was, on that. Um, I yeah, it's fun though, and I'm I'm interested in playing more and uh, talking about it more once we can talk about it more. But yeah. I can't wait for this game. I have such a, a soft spot for Yoshi games, with the exception of Yoshi's Story. I don't like Yoshi's Story, <laughs> but uh, I loved Woolly Stink. World, and this feels like a like a exact successor to Woolly World. So very yeah, it, it's actually funny how and I'm anybody who's played the demo has knows this already, but it's funny how much not making it yarn actually does change the mm-hmm. gameplay mm-hmm. because there's none of that throw the ball at the make the platform like mm-hmm. all that stuff is gone. It's much more like a traditional Yoshi game in the mechanics now. Yeah. It worries me. Not to, I shouldn't say it worries me. Uh, here's an interesting thing: Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild and Splatoon and Mario Kart are all these giant successors to great games. Yoshi's Story or Yoshi was it called? Crafted, Crafted World, World is not. It's just like another Time out. Yoshi just another game. Thing. Time out. It's a direct sequel to Yoshi's Woolly World, which is a great game. Yeah, that's fine. But it's not expanding on it in some like um, amazing like revolutionary way. It's just another one. It it feels a bit Nintendo cookie cutter, and that doesn't mean it's a bad game. Which was another Yoshi's game. Yoshi's Yoshi's cookie cookie. cutter. (laughs) No, but it's more of a copy than like a an iteration, and that's fine. But it's almost like we're seeing now that Switch has, you know, console games like Breath of the Wild, and it has handheld games like this game. And I think there's like. The, both, Nintendo has you know, development uh, wings that can do both those and make kind of simpler, fun you know, popcorn games and these giant, massive, sprawling games. And this just isn't the giant, massive, sprawling game. Yeah. It just isn't. I mean, I think there's audiences for both of those, right? Like, Absolutely. I know that... Uh, there used to be consoles for both of those. There used to be a, a well, 3DS yeah. and a Wii. And that's why I think it's a little bit weird that they're combined now. And we're going to start seeing more... You know, very good experience. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people in the office had a similar reaction to Kirby last year, and I I, I really loved exactly. Kirby, but a lot of people are like, "Well, it's just like, it's just more Kirby." I'm like, yeah, those games are like they represent a second tier of Nintendo that I feel like aren't mind blowing or like like 
you know, they don't break the mold, but they do offer a similarly solid experience and therefore like big Nintendo They're fans good. like us. Like, yeah, the, I just, the weird thing for me is that Kirby's always been garbage, but Yoshi's what? Island, the first game, is so Damn. good. Why do we even invite you on this show? <laughs> Yoshi's Island is such a good game. It was a, so is Kirby. So is Kirby. Which Kirby? Any of, All them. of them. Most yeah. of them. It's like Superstar. Most Kirby's are Superstar good. is like are, keep amazing. cutting it down to the ones that matter. Superstar, give me a break. Superstar is great. Great cave offensive. Great cave That's offensive. That's the only Milky good Way. thing. No, in Milky Way Galaxy is so good too because you can choose your powers. Ah, oh, I love Milky Way. Y'all are nuts. Kirby's Dream Course. That's the real Kirby. Dream Course is good. I Canvas mean, that was Curse a good is one. good. Canvas Curse is good. Those what? games are good. But Yoshi's Island yeah, is but amazing. They're like, but they're like very good. You know what I mean? Like uh, I would say that but none of them any are of like Yoshi and Kirby Kirby's games. Kirby's Hilt and Tumble. Nobody's going to give Kirby... Cool I did really... I, okay, I didn't expect to get that response, Sam. Well, Nobody's I like gonna how give, it had the attachment that like... Yeah. It, yeah. I thought it was great. Nobody's going to give Kirby or Yoshi game like a 10 out of 10. But I think but Yoshi's Island is a 10 out of 10. Yoshi's Island is a 10 out of 10. Yeah, Yoshi's about, Island is one of the most important platformers of all time. I'm just saying Kirby never had that. Yeah, but Sam, what about Yoshi's Story? Maybe a Like a six. All right. Yeah, crazy. Well, hey, before we went into time. We have plenty of time. We're yeah. doing audio now. Yeah, we can, it doesn't um, even matter. Talk about Breath well, of the Wild. Well, I'll change yeah, the tape and I'm, we'll get back. I'm, <laughs> uh, in honor of the Switch's two-year anniversary, I'm uh, replaying Breath of the Wild. I've got two Divine Beasts down, and I am absolutely floored by the amount of like joy that I'm having just replaying that game. Hmm. And I played this game three times all the way through in 2017. I played it once on my own. I played it once with Brian for Link Together, and then I did the Master Quest. And I'm going back to it just like regular mode, and uh, I'm so surprised at like how differently I'm playing it, um, You know the routes that I'm taking. I don't know why anybody wouldn't go to the Rito Village first. Like Rivali's Gale is by far and away the best power in the game. Um, well, the ability to, but I didn't know that the jumping time, one? So yeah, yeah the ability to shoot you halfway up a climb yeah. is so That's really so smart. clutch. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's especially awesome. before you have Hot all your tip. endurance to yeah. like, get higher. It's okay. so great. That's yeah. really smart. Um, uh, it's just it's such a fantastic game. Is that on and our tips page? <laughs> should be. <laughs> I was talking to uh, Alana, a friend of the show, Alana Pierce, about uh, Breath of the Wild, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm really afraid to go back to it because it's only been two years. I want to go back when it's been like five. And I told her, I was like, "I'm like." I'm having such a good time replaying it and it's still such an amazing game. You know, like I don't feel like, oh, I just played this or I just did these things because you can play it so wildly differently than you have previous times, you know. Oh, Damon's playing through game. it again right now also. Really? I hear that you guys are Damon playing. and I, it's really funny, Damon and I have, into it. have like, in the last couple of years, we have found out that we're both playing the same games at the same time. I think you guys both went back to Odyssey. At we the did. Time. Yeah, we were both playing Odyssey at the same time. I think that means yeah. you guys are twins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Separated at birth. See, I assumed it's just I do look a lot like Damon. We are both whites with beards. Oh, so. man. Same yeah. person. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, Eric Sapp is uh, one of our designers, and he went back and is playing it for the first time. And yeah. Been, like, he just tweeting. got a Switch. Yeah, yeah, he just got a Switch, so he's been tweeting about his experiences, and I think that has that's, inspired a lot of people to start it up That's again the well. reason why I did it, because yeah. like he was posting all these, like, clips and, mm-hmm. and f- like you know he f- posted a f- uh, uh, screen grab of him like he just stumbled into the uh, forest and found the master sword and couldn't lift it at first and was just like wrote this whole thing about you know like oh my god I came into the forest and I found the sword but I couldn't get it how do I do it and like I was like man I gotta play this game again it's so good <laughs> it's, really good. it's so freaking good so I'm playing not a whole lot of actual Nintendo because I'm working on the Devil May Cry guide but I'm almost done but in my free time, I started playing a Pokemon tabletop RPG based off of the rules from Dungeons and Dragons Fifth mm. Edition. Super cool. Who and made it? Just a fan. So yeah, so um, a fan on I should bring a fan up, name Casey DeFree. Fan name Casey DeFree. No, <laughs> I should bring up that guy's name. But um, a fan on Reddit um, posted a rule book that looks just like it's a PDF and looks like very similar to the D and D rule book, mm-hmm. um, and made Using a system. Using like Pokemon key art, or did he do yeah, his own art? Yeah, Pokemon key art, and he, but like he transferred, he made the stats like into D and D stats and descriptions, and like made the rules work so it would work with D and D. And we've been having a ton of fun with it, and it's a great time, and I love and cool. I love it. And if you're interested in the rule book, I posted it on Twitter a while ago, and I tweet updates about it if you're curious. That's awesome. But yeah, I really I like it. I'm enjoying it. So hey, uh, we do have some questions for a little not game called Question Block. I'm not going to fight you on that. I do think it's a game. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do this every every episode. This is now a tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the first question we have from, and I have no idea how to pronounce this. I'm sorry. It's a screen name on Twitter. Um, I think his like 
written out name was like Ari getting your own tier, which is a League of Legends character. But um, Ari WL One Ray on Twitter says, "If someone had never played a video game before but wanted to try one out, what game would you recommend they play first, Nintendo or otherwise?" Pac Man. Pac Man. Why Pac Man? Chimps can play it. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh wow. So like successfully? Also, yeah, and also like two and a half year olds can play. It's like yeah. the earliest possible game people can play. Oh man! So it's like if you want to know, you know, if you've never seen a television screen and are amazed by that, and have never seen a joystick, you might be able to sort it out still. Super Mario World. Like I, that's it's a perfect game. <laughs> like why I mean, wouldn't you start at the top? That's what I was thinking too, because Mario was the first game that I played, and I, but I also had someone sitting next to me to teach me how to play when I was like I don't know two, mm-hmm. but. I mean, I feel like Sam's answer is just the objectively right answer. You shouldn't like, ever feel that way about my answer. No, but like with this one specifically, because you backed it up <laughs> with scientific studies that I'm sure. Are yeah, you got that there, chimp right? science. To yeah, back that you chimp up. science That's, that yeah. you could totally just be lying chimps about. Chimps might have played Miss Pac Man. I trust lying you. About it. You no, know, I trust you. <laughs> I trust you, Sam. You Sam would never lie about a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually a little bit scared of chimps. Me too. I mean, they're terrifying. They they, they hurt people very bad. Very strong. Mm-hmm. They're very aggressive. Mm-hmm. Tom, they bite. How right, do you feel about chimps? <laughs> <off. laughs> what? <laughs> Tom uh, chose XCOM. Let's move on. <laughs> Whoa, no. Uh, I think Pac-Man's a good one. I think Tetris would be another good one. Okay, yeah. very nice. Uh, Tetris would be good. I also think, uh, and if we want to pull a modern one here, uh, Snakebird or Snakebird Primer are mm. both like incredibly good puzzle games. If you haven't played them, that are very very easy to learn and very hard to master. And Ooh, The Witness would be a good one too. Uh, I don't think The Witness, actually, I think The Witness does a lot with, like, messing with your preconceived notions of games, Mm. and if you didn't have those notions, you'd probably, like, the reveal in that game wouldn't really be a big deal to you. I don't think you'd get that far. (laughs) I don't know, it's like playing Undertale without playing RPGs, you'd just Uh, be like, I guess, I guess, like, what's the big deal? Here's the dog. I think we know the three, the top three games that people play that have never played games before. It's Solitaire, Minesweeper, and Bejeweled. Oh. Yeah. Candy Crush. That's probably yeah. more Candy accurate Crush. now. Yeah. I was going to say, maybe for another modern game, maybe Journey. Mm. Journey would be good. It's, it's short. It doesn't require a whole lot of skill. You're just going. It does have 3D camera control, which I still know oh. people that I can't do. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Just just to do analog oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, you're right. People. Well, if you want to learn how to do analog mm-hmm. camera control, that's a good way to do it. That is a good first game for that. Mm-hmm. Hey, for the second game from uh, Don Guerrero. 55, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, um, about Monster Hunter, because why not? Stop this. <laughs> I know you said that. I have a reason for including this. Um, do you think that we will see anything Monster Hunter related to the Switch this year? Capcom is killing it right now with RE2 and DMC5, Devil May Cry 5, and Resident Evil 2. I'm inclined to say that I believe for the 15th Monster Hunter anniversary, we get a new game. This week is Monster Hunter's 15th anniversary of the original one's launch. Mm-hmm. Super awesome. We're not getting a whole lot in the States about it really there's just like a landing page with a really nice letter from the creators but japan's getting a lot of cool stuff but um to the question are we going to get another monster hunter switch game this year any thoughts i no? thought you already <laughs> i think i thought you already had thoughts <laughs> that was like, i'm gonna be on, i'm gonna be honest i rarely think about monster hunter oh, <laughs> my vibe my vibe is we might get an announcement i was but thinking I that too think after ice game this year i think we might get an announcement after ice yeah Born. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, or or they could do like an E3 tease, right? Yeah, I, I don't think that we're gonna get any Monster Hunter Switch release this mm-hmm. in 2019, though. No, I don't think it's not uh, the totally out of the realm of possibility that there's like there's a bunch of Monster Hunter uh, DS games and mm-hmm. uh, PSP games and stuff like that that like would very easily come to Switch in an uh, upres version, like Ultimate uh, mm-hmm. Generations Ultimate. Yeah, um, I I wouldn't mind seeing that. Like I've spent actually quite a bit of time playing um, Monster Hunter Four. Yeah. On 3DS and had a good time with that. Like, I wouldn't mind that coming back. Yeah, so. maybe maybe we'll get another one. Maybe yeah. Monster Hunter Stories port. Like. Oh, I would love a Monster Hunter Stories sequel for Switch. I think that'd be really cool because I thought that game, I never played the fir- the original game? one. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a it was RPG. A, yeah, it was yeah. A, it's a turn-based RPG with a lot of monster customization and an interesting story. Are, are and you, do you guys think that Monster Hunter... Uh, could the most recent one can't come to Switch? There's world? There's no way for World to do that? They have said before that it's very unlikely because of the limitations of the Switch. Yeah. 
I think they could do it, but it would not be an easy task. Maybe a stream game? I was going to yeah. say. It yeah. would not be, it wouldn't just be, hey, here's the game. Yeah. It, like, it would need to be either very reduced or streamed or Ca- Cap- something. I mean, Capcom is, is sort of the uh, pioneer in that. In Japan, you know, they, they were the first of the console to do, like, streaming RE7 to the Switch. And, uh, but I can't imagine how much more horsepower you'd need to stream. A, I did a massively back up multiplayer Resident Evil 2 with a bunch of Resident Evil games that are coming to Switch. Yeah, Plus, so like, they want people to play that you know Resident Evil games on Switch, so they brought a bunch to it. Maybe we'll do the same with Monster Hunter. RE7 and uh, what was the other one? Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah, mm-hmm. those games also are not online. I feel like as soon as you start adding a that's what I'm saying. Game into that's what I'm saying. Game, like the infrastructure that you'd need to to support like. You're streaming it, and it needs to communicate flawlessly with people online. That's just like too much juice. It's a you lot. Know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And streaming is just not not going to work out in the United States. We do not have the infrastructure to have most of the country on broadband, so they can do it. It's really sad. Yep. Like my wife, if I'm not connect uh, wired to my Wi-Fi right now, it like cuts out a couple times a day for a few minutes, like mm. for no reason. What do you do? Oh my god. I get mad and yell about it <laughs> to my go cat. outside. <laughs> go outside and get some vitamin D. Right. Yeah. But hey, that's about all the time we have for NVC this week. Remember, you can catch Nintendo Voice Chat every week on Thursday at 3 p.m. wherever you're listening, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, wherever. And remember, this is also the only place at IGN that you can get the thing.